Welcome, you're with Live For Love TV. I'd love you to love, share and subscribe. But since there's no love button, you can use a like for now. Take care. Welcome back to Live For Love TV. Today is the 20th day of the second month, the 22nd year inside the 21st century. I hope everyone's doing well out there. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about houses, about property and stuff like that. And when I talk about it, I'm going to talk about it from the perspective of Let's say people like uh, athletes, all these people can afford really big properties, million dollar houses. And why so many of them, after a few years, have to end up selling them, end up either bankrupt or have to end up selling them off a, uh, a pittance of what they paid for it. it. Happens to a lot of people. We could name lots and lots of artists. It ha it's happened to a lot of rappers have done this. A lot of footballers done this, American footballers and, and musicians and stuff like that. Now, I, I'd suggest that the real problem why these people have to sell off their houses is because once they've bought the house, they have no idea what the upkeep of a house or a mansion of a house that these people normally have. They've got no understanding of what this is upkeep because what they've come from, they think, oh, well, I've got a $10 million house. You know, it's easy to, to keep upkeep. A $10 million house is going to cost you hundreds and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of, of dollars to, to upkeep over the year. And this is what most people are not prepared for. And when they see the money start to shrink out of their account, though they've already got the showpiece house, which is what they really bought it for, it wasn't something that really was a, a shoe that fit them. They decided to buy it because they'd seen somebody big and they'd now got that much money that they, they now have to keep upkeep this house and it's going to cost them a lot of money. Now, I'm not just accusing, I'm not just saying this happens to, to footballers, artists, rappers and whatsoever. This happens to everyday people as well. A lot of returnees from America to the Caribbean, from Canada to the Caribbean especially, um, to, you know, returnees to Jamaica, returnees to Ghana, returnees to Nigeria. Happens a lot to a lot of these, these people because what they do is they see when they've left their, their home countries, they see houses that they want and dream of. They work really hard and eventually they decide, I'm going to go and buy that. I'm going to build a house or I'm going to buy a house. Maybe a three, four, five, six, seven, eight bedroom house. And they've got, the, they've got that, that initial fee that they start building the house. And you know, once you start building the house, you're going to try and find a way to finish it. So they, they exhaust every penny they have finishing this house. And sometimes it takes them years to do. And by the time they've done it, already the cracks start to show or something has moved on or something else has changed with the house or the, the era or the property. And now they're having to put in a lot of money just to keep the house going. This is happening in around the world. And I'm only mentioning it because some of you watching this are gonna probably say, I wanna go back to Nigeria. I wanna go back to um, Ghana or to the Caribbean. I'm going to build a house. Think very carefully about the upkeep of the house that you're going to build. Because if you can't keep the, the, the house up, it's going to drain your resources just to stay alive. And if you're in retirement, it's going to be even worse. And good chance that your children are not going to want to definitely put that upkeep in once you're not, no longer alive, if you hand it to them. They're going to look at it and the first thing they're going to do is sell it because they're going to say to themselves, well, why would I spend all this money on this house that I didn't build, I didn't put into and I really don't want, to be honest with you. So the, the reason why I mention this is because it's happening too often. If you go around the Caribbean, you see all these houses locked up all over the place and you say, where is the owner? And the owners are in the, in the, in the, in the diaspora and um, maybe never to come back. And these houses, when by time they're falling apart, basically, as beautiful as they were, they're falling apart because they started them too big. And sometimes, as I say, what happens is people growing up, maybe they grew up in a, what we call a board house, wooden house, and then they saw the master in, a, in, in this sort of mansion of a house. And they thought, you know, one day I'm going to have that, that sort of house that the master had, a mansion of a house. But take this into, into account if you're thinking about that's come from your parents or your grandparents. What our grandparents and our parents wouldn't have realized is that the master didn't have any upkeep for his house. He had free labor and literally free labor running any house makes that house easy to look after. If he had had to pay a good going rate to upkeep his house, he himself couldn't have afforded that mansion even on 100 or 200 years ago. But he was paying nothing, so it was easy. 
whatever it was to, to, to cut it down, to plant it, he paid nothing. And so when you now are in the, in the, in the 20, what, 21st century, trying to upkeep these houses and these mansions of houses that people are building all over the place, the upkeep is what's breaking most people. And people, due to pride, will keep paying as much as they can, but they're suffering, they're struggling. They're needing help from other family members sometimes, which they don't want to ask for because then it shows that they're struggling. It's a difficult, difficult um, time for a lot of people. If you can be modest and just build a house that's the size of what you're going to need, then you'll be okay. You build a little two bedroom, three bedroom, whatever, and you build the rooms just to the right size that you can maintain and you can look after. Don't try and uh, compete. Don't try and compete with the um, people who just built a house across the road or people in your area just come back from Canada who have just built an, a seven bedroom house and you think I've got to have a seven at least, if not an eight bedroom. Forget that. That's going to get you into a lot of trouble. It's going to get you into serious financial problems, especially if you're coming to the end of your life. You don't want that kind of problems. So think about very carefully um, what you're doing before you build these houses because there's dinosaurs all over Africa, all over the Caribbean. When you see them, you drive up and down. I call them dinosaurs. No one lives in them. And, and, and when no one lives in a house and the house is not being opened up and not being used, it deteriorates 10 times quicker than it would if somebody was living in there. And then sometimes you put somebody in there and then you can't get them out. Another problem, because you don't want to leave your, your mansion just sitting there that people can come and, and take bits and pieces off it. So these things should be thought about very carefully before people enter into them. I know it's a, it's a dream for a lot of people to go and live in a, in a tropical island with a massive house, uh, a massive piece of land. But remember, someone's going to have to take care of that land as well. Someone's going to have to plant it up. Someone's going to have to keep it looking, you know, like somebody lives there. And that's going to cost you a bit of money. And um, when you think about it, and you're, maybe you're, you're on a pension or maybe you've got a little bit of an income and you're just trying to, you know, make ends meet, those things can easily get left to one side. And when you, people start to see your, your house and your land overgrowing, they'll soon start to realise it that big mansion is, is, is really putting you to the wall financially. And so the impression you were trying to make is not made. But anyway, take a think about these things, you know, and if you're in families or you've got friends or people who are doing these things, try to advise them as best you can uh, about this because the upkeep, that's the killer. If you build, the bigger you build a house, the bigger the upkeep. And also remember, this is not dissimilar to buying a 100,000 US dollar car. Changing the brakes on that and changing a car on a $5,000 car is completely different. It may be just brakes, but just changing the brakes on one and the other, you'll see the difference in the upkeep. So when you look towards these things and say, yeah, this is what I want, this is what I want, make sure that you're able to finance it and you understand what comes with it. Take care. See you soon. Live for Love TV. Like, share and subscribe to Live for Love TV. Straight.